This hadith is the famous hadith of Fatima bint Qais, one of the famous Sahabiyat. She narrates, and this hadith is in Sahih Muslim, that one day we were sitting in our house when we heard the crier running through the city saying, As-salatu jami'a, as-salatu jami'a. As-salatu jami'a is how the Prophet ﷺ would call the Sahaba to the masjid when there was an issue other than the five salawats. The adhan is not given. You have an announcement. Come to the musalla, come to the musalla. That's how they would do that. As-salatu jami'a simply means come to the musalla. That's what it means now. Even though it technically means yani, come and pray, but the meaning here is come to the masjid. So, Fatima says, I rushed to the masjid to see what was happening. And I prayed with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I was in the first line of the women, right behind the men. In her eagerness to hear what the Prophet ﷺ would say, she was in the first saf of the women behind the men. The point she's trying to say is, I heard directly everything that I'm about to tell you. So after we finished praying, the Prophet ﷺ went on the mimbar and sat down. And he said, let everybody remain where he is. Nobody move. Let everybody remain where he is. Do you know why I called you? They said, Allah and His Messenger know best. He said, I did not call you today to give you an advice or a lecture to cause you to cry or to fear Allah. That's not the reason of mu'idah, no khatira today. I didn't call you. But rather, I came to tell you what Tamim al-Dari came to inform me. Tamim al-Dari. Who is Tamim al-Dari? I have a lecture about him online very briefly about one of the, you know, my series about the Sahaba. Tamim al-Dari was one of the few Sahabi who was a Christian and then embraced Islam. The majority of Sahaba were pagans. Very, very few were Jewish or Christian when they embraced Islam. Very few. And of them is Tamim al-Dari. So he's one of those group of Sahaba who was Ahli Kitab and he embraces Islam. And of them is Tamim al-Dari. And so Tamim al-Dari came to me embracing Islam. And he told me a story that happened to him many, many years ago. Now, Tamim al-Dari is from one of the tribes up north. And those tribes were seafaring tribes. They would ride the ocean. The Quraysh were a non-seafaring tribe. The Quraysh despised the ocean. The Quraysh did not like riding on the ocean. And that's why the Quran is full of references. The Quraysh did not like the ocean. And few of the Qurayshis rode on the ocean. And that's why when our Prophet ﷺ saw a dream where some of his own Sahaba were riding the oceans, conquering other lands, he laughed and he said, I saw my own Ummah shall be riding on the waves like kings, riding horses and steeds, galloping, and they shall be conquering, you know, uh, oceans. And, and so Tamim al-Dari, he came to embrace Islam. And he came in the ninth year of the Hijrah, and he came to... Del you know, in those days, they sent the delegations to embrace Islam. And when he came, he told the Prophet ﷺ about something that happened to him many, many, many years ago. He said, Ya Rasulullah, ya Rasulullah let me tell you an interesting story. Let me tell you something that when I was an earlier young man, a Christian, this is what happened to me. So when he told this story, the Prophet ﷺ then called the Sahaba and said, Here is Tamim al-Dadi, let me tell you what he told me. That's the hadith here, okay? Now, it's a very long hadith. And you will find it. Where will you find it, guys? Online. I gave you the reference right now. Sahih Muslim. The story goes as follows that. Tamim al-Dadi says when he was a younger man, that he was in a ship of around 30 people from the tribe of Judam and Lucham. These are Christian Arab tribes up north. And he was from those tribes. And once... A, a, a very severe storm came in the ocean and for 30 days they were lost at sea. After there were 30 days they were lost at sea. They had no clue where they were until they came to a far away you know, ocean that they could not recognize and they saw an island in the distance. So some of them, Tamim al Dari and a few of them took the smaller boat to go get some water, to go get some food. So you know every large boat has that small boat to go in. So they took that smaller boat to go to that island. And when they landed on that island, they met a very terrifying animal, a beast that could speak to them, a dabba that could speak to them. And we'll mention the dabba when we come to one of the 10 signs, the dabba that could come to them. And this beast was unrecognizable. Like, you know, call him what, any uh, Bigfoot or something. Although the hadith did not describe him. It simply says, a beast that's very hairy. 
just nothing but hair and could speak. And Tamim saw this and his people and they were terrified. And the beast said, come with me. I'm going to take you to my owner or my master. And they, they went uh, to this island and they went to this cave where they saw a, a man larger than any man they have ever seen. And the man was tied up in a more severe manner than any man they have ever seen. And the man then began to ask a number of questions. And it goes like, you know, 10 questions, so I'm not going to go into all of them. And they were so terrified, they just responded one after the other. And until in the end, the last question was, I mean, of the questions, the, the Tabariya Sea, is it still there? This well, is it giving water? This land, is it still cultivated? And they answered, yes, yes, yes. And always the answer was, a time will come when there shall be no water in that lake. A time will come when this well will be dry. A time will come when this land that you consider to be very beautiful and green will be completely barren. So he's giving predictions in the future. Then he says, that has the Ummi Prophet been sent amongst the Arabs? Has that Prophet been sent amongst the Arabs? And Tamim al-Dari at this time was a Christian, but he was an Arab. He knows the Prophet has come. So he says, yes, he has been sent. And he has come out from Mecca and he has settled in Yathrib. Because he didn't call it Medina, because only Muslims called it Medina. For those 10 years when Islam was spreading, Yathrib and Medina were the same name, as you know, the same city. And the Muslims called it Medina. And the Munafiqoon and the pagans called it the old name Yathrib. And uh, that is why we are not allowed as Muslims to call it Yathrib unless we describe it that this is the pre Islamic uh, name. Uh, in any case, so because the Prophet said they call it Yathrib and it is Medina. They call it Yathrib, it is, so we do not call it Yathrib as a name. In any case, so Tamim al Dadi said he has settled in Medina. The Dajjal says, Did the Arabs fight him? They say, Yes. So he says, who won? They say, sometimes he wins and sometimes the Arabs, meaning the Uhud. Uhud, they say, was a loss, even though Uhud was not a loss. From our perspective, Uhud was a stalemate. It was not a loss, but the Quraysh interpreted it as a loss. The Jal then said, if there is good in the Arabs, they should follow him. And I will tell you about me. I am the Messiah. And it is only a matter of time before I am let loose. And when I am let loose, I shall visit every single city on earth in 40 days, except for Mecca and Medina, for they are made haram for me. Every time I come to them, the angels will uh, stop me. Then the Prophet ﷺ stopped his lecture and he began, and he began uh, poking on the mimbar. Like this to emphasize. And he said, This is Tliba. This is Tliba. This is Tliba. Did I not tell you about the Dajjal? And they said, Yes, you did. Now, this hadith ends over here. Now, this hadith is the famous hadith of Tamim al Dari, narrated by one Sahabiya, Fatima binti Qais. And it is in Sahih Muslim, and its chain appears to be authentic. So, we put this hadith in a footnote and we have a question mark and we leave it at that. Allah knows best. I don't know. But mainstream interpretation, mainstream interpretation, Imam Nawi, Ibn Kathir, these scholars, they consider this to be authentic because this is Sahih Muslim. Then the issue comes, how do you reconcile this with the other ahadith about the coming of the Dajjal shall be born at a later time, his parents shall be childless, etc, etc. And you have one of two opinions. The first of them is that time and space mean nothing to Allah. And so, Tamim al Dadi got lost in, let me speak in the language of Star Trek, and I'm a big fan of Star Trek when I was a child, they got last, lost in a different time warp. And so they traveled to a different time and place, and Allah is ala kulli shayin qadir. And they saw an image of Dajjal projected from the future back to their time frame. And Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. Okay, fair enough. And the other interpretation is that Dajjal is in fact alive and healthy, and that he was born 
And all of this happened in the past and then he is being chained and kept as the hadith of Tamim says and he shall be released in the future. Now the issue comes, the only hadith that mentions alive and healthy and chains is this one hadith of Tamim al That's it. Every other hadith gives a different narrative. So you have two different narratives. Can we reconcile the two? Most scholars try to do that, but it's a very difficult fit. And that's why Shaykh Rashid Rida and uh, uh, Ibn Uthim and others, they basically said, look, this one, you know, you have a big, beautiful puzzle, right? You have one piece, it's just not fitting in. And the puzzle seems complete. And yet you have in the box this piece. So you can say, maybe the manufacturers put this by accident. I'm being an analogous here, right? Maybe this piece shouldn't have been in the box. It's just a mistake by one of the narrators. That's what they're saying. And the picture is complete. And the other scholars say, no, it's in the box. The, the producer, not the producer, the manufacturer sent it, so I'm gonna squeeze it in. There's a little space here, let me just put it in and shove it there, and khalas, we have a painting. Which version do you wanna follow? I leave it to you.